see there will be any movement really. And, you know, I'm going to talk about something that uh, I'm sure for a lot of you, uh, like my very good self, it was not, it was never really a movement. Uh, it has to do with sciences, and I'm reading a lot of very interesting uh, things here. The very basic uh, science that we did uh, back in high school and all that. Those were very challenging moments, and I'm seeing biochemistry, PhD in biochemistry. I don't know how anybody uh, studies that and all that. But we have right here in the studios this morning, Professor uh, Gordon Awandari. He will be helping us. He is the director of the uh, center, the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens and here at the University of Ghana. It's a big thing, and uh, we'll be trying to break it down, really, get to know exactly what it is that they do there and how you, as a member of the university community, and, of course, uh, those outside, of course, or can also be a part of it, get to benefit from it, and we'll learn how they are also able to contribute, really, to, to research and development in general right here in the studios and let me just say that the center for biology of infectious pathogens is one of the world bank's uh, african centers for uh, of excellence and was established in 2013 led by the faculty uh, from the department of biochemistry cell and molecular biology and the noguchi memorial institute for medical uh, research so we'll be learning more about the uh, center there and we are very happy this morning uh, as we've been joined in the studios by the director of the center professor gordon awandari and of course, the project manager Michael in Cancer is also here. And uh, uh, Wilson, uh, I, he helped me with a name earlier, but I'm, I'm going to butcher it this time around, and he will forgive me and correct me accordingly. Wilson uh, Ademul Ademulwe, uh, or uh, forgive me, forgive me, <laughs> Wilson. Just a Wilson. Wilson. Okay, yeah, I think I'll do it there. Wilson <laughs> one. Very good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Great. So let me start with you, uh, Prof. Uh, I've tried to really uh, summarize, really, all that the center does uh, here on the University of Ghana campus for uh, those who I have seen uh, the notice around and all that. But for those who are not really familiar and aware of what the center does, what exactly uh, do you do, aside what I said earlier? All right, thank you very much, and uh, good morning to all the listeners. Mm. Um, well, uh, WAGBIP, that's the name of the center. Um, what we primarily do is to train scientists. So as you noted, we, we were established uh, uh, through support from the World Bank and the government of Ghana uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago. And um, our primary mandate is to train young biomedical scientists in Africa. And uh, we, we have therefore developed programs at the Department of Biochemistry for masters and PhD uh, training in molecular okay. cell biology of infectious diseases. Okay. And uh, we also uh, recently had uh, you know introduced a postdoctoral program. Okay. Which gives the opportunity for um, individuals who have completed their PhD to have two or three years uh, uh, you know blocked time to do research uh, before they take up a faculty position. So that's what mm. we call the postdoctoral program. I see. Yeah. And to support all this, uh, we, we are building a really huge um, research portfolio uh, because, as you know, research training has to be done in the context of high quality research. So that's yeah. what we're doing, expanding the research and building capacity to be, uh, you know, conducting really competitive science mm. uh, right here at the University of Ghana and our, at our collaborating uh, uh, institutions. Great. Uh, let me find out, uh, uh, Professor um, NSIT and, of course, uh, Professor Ebenezer uh, Odrous, who have all talked about the need for research and how this will uh, help the university uh, get to the level that it wants to and all that. With we know of Noguchi and the role it plays in, in West Africa and even in Africa in, in general and, and all that. How do these centers really, uh, for those who do not really get a concept of research and how vital it is, how do these centers really play into that general uh, aspiration of a world-class university? Yeah, so uh, that's a very good question. Um, I, I think that um, uh, there's no development without research. Okay. So um, if you look at all the countries that have, uh, uh, you know, accelerated in their development, it's been led by research and innovation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ghana and Africa as a whole, we are really lagging behind. If you look at the number of PhDs per 
million people, uh, you know, our numbers are abysmal compared to the developed world. Mm. So um, we really have to catch up, and that's, that's why the World Bank uh, and other partners uh, are supporting these big initiatives across Africa to really build capacity in science and innovation. Mm. Um, because whether it's uh, diseases, which is what we focus on, okay. or uh, ICT or agriculture, it is research that develops new uh, approaches to solving problems. If there's any problem, you have to use research to find a way around it. And mm. uh, we are doing that for uh, infectious diseases. And we work closely with Noguchi, as you mentioned. Okay. Noguchi is one of the leading research institutions in Africa. Mm. And we are working with them closely and um, you know, using the platforms at Noguchi and the Department of Biochemistry to give students the opportunity to get high quality training in a, in a very rigorous uh, research environment. I see. Now, let, let me get to the project uh, uh, manager um, of uh, Michael and Kansa and t tell us, uh, in a center like that, uh, what exactly do you do as, as a project uh, uh, manager? What exactly happens in under uh, your watch there at, at the center? Um, I also want to say a big good morning to all your listeners Great. and to um, my colleagues out there. So as a project manager, um, you know, the project runs for a number of uh, period of time. Okay. So it's time bound as well. And then um, we're supposed to have to have achieved certain, some sort of milestones at certain periods in time. So what I'm in here to do is we properly apportion time to activities, ensure that the money that donors have given us have been spent judiciously and then um, we are heading we are there adhering to yeah. their requirements and also you know they require reports from us of things we've done for the for some period of time so i also help out with developing reports for our donors so that they will know what we do and also do us a bit of um public um public awareness like what we're doing today so in a nutshell i'm just i'm, I'm, I'm the director's right hand man and I ensure that everything that was supposed to be doing is done correctly, money are spent wisely, our students are having the best quality time in regards to education and also their social lives and also um, anything else that comes along with respect to communication and um, addressing needs of the, of the center, I come in as well to answer those questions. So I'm not sure that's what I do Great. for the center. Thank you. And well, Wilson is a student, uh, he's a, po a postgrad uh, uh, student at the, at the center. Uh, how, how's it been like? And uh, I, I, um, I don't know. It's your first year as postgrad uh, student at the center, or, 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 or you are you are almost done with with the program. How how, how long is the program really? Okay. Um, good morning, uh, everyone. Mm -hmm. Once again. So I came in for the MPhil program. Okay. And the program is supposed to be for two years, which I concluded uh, in July. This oh, year. you're done. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry then for calling. I'm still calling you a student. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah. His thesis is still being corrected. So oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, okay. I, I, I understand. I understand. Good. So, how, how's the experience been like? I, I want to believe you are Nigerian. Yes, please. Good. So, how, how's the experience uh, really been like? And do you have your undergrad uh, um, education or program in Ghana? No, I did not. I oh, okay. finished from uh, the University of Ibadan, uh, back oh. in Nigeria. Uh, Ibadan, they are, they are very good friends, you know that. Oh, yeah. The University of Ghana <laughs> has a very long-standing relationship with uh, yeah. University of Ibadan. And every year, even in sports, for instance, there's this bilateral uh, games that we have and all that. So, so why, why, why the, the choice of uh, Legon and, 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 and the center, really? Well, I, I get this question uh, all, oh. almost all, all of the I time. <laughs> But the, the, the major thing was because I got the opportunity at the time. Okay. So I've always wanted to do uh, a part of my degree or one of my degrees abroad. Mm -hmm. But then the opportunity to study at one became came mm -hmm. at the time that it did. And when the options from the interview, I yeah. realized that the people that were talking to me at the interviews yeah. seems to know what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. So I developed a keen interest to come yeah. and they do the program here in Ghana. So it, it's it's not because let me let me let me make a point here that yeah. it's not because it's necess it's uh, that Ghana is better than Nigeria or Nigeria uh, is better than Ghana. Nobody's <laughs> going there. The opportunity came at the time, <laughs> and then I took. Uh, yeah, if, if not for anything at all, we know we are better than you uh, when, it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to Jollof. Oh. But, <laughs> but that's not what we're going to do today. Well, let me get back to you, Prof. Um, and let's talk about 
the, the the impact so far and that is a very good a very important area i want to believe that is why because i'm reading here uh, that the center was awarded eight million dollars by the world bank in 2013 to provide master's phd training and targeted short courses in cell and molecular uh, biology conduct uh, research and and all that and so in all these were the sort of investment really that the world bank for instance has put in and all that what are some of the things that we have gotten from the center so far by way of research? Yeah, so um, as you know, the, it's research and training. Mm. So, uh, in fact, uh, the most important uh, job we have to do is to do the training. That's uh, the, the reason why we, we were given money. Mm. Yes, but <laughs> as I said, the research goes hand in hand with the training. Okay. So, in terms of training, I can tell you that um, as we speak, um, 102 okay. African scientists have either completed the program or are, or are in the program. I see. And benefiting from uh, scholarships and, you know, high quality research and international connections and everything. Mm. So 102 over, over the course of just two years. Okay. These are masters, PhD, uh, and postdocs. I see. So this is, uh, this is a massive impact just in a short while. Mm. In terms of research, uh, as you know, research, it takes a while for, for the, uh, the results to show. Um, but even that, we are already, uh, you know, producing manuscripts at about, you know, 30 uh, articles a year. Okay. And that is going to uh, just go up. Every day, students are writing papers and uh, mm. we're trying to get them out uh, uh, to be published. So um, we're going to contribute a lot to knowledge generation and dissemination. Mm. And we're going to produce brilliant scientists who are going to also go and start their own groups and mm. um, do their own research and also train people. So there, it's really a, a snowballing effect uh, mm. that we're training uh, future leaders who are going to go and also start their own groups, just like I've done yeah. and uh, like others have done. So Great. So what you talked about, the pool of African researchers that you have trained and all that, I'm, I'm particularly interested in that because I want to know how after here how how it, it works like it so uh, do people just go back to their countries and do their own or is there still a sort of network really uh, for former uh, researchers and students and scientists alike from uh, here to to come together and do something oh yes um, in fact that's a very good question because one of mm -hmm. the challenges um, of research in Africa is the the lack of collaboration among African scientists. Yeah. Uh, in fact, African scientists individually we collaborate with uh, partners from Europe and the USA more than with our fellow African scientists. So one of the things we're trying to do is to promote more collaboration between African scientists. Mm. Um, so our center has about eight partner institutions across Africa, okay. South, West, you know, oh, okay, I can see the University uh, of Health and Allied Sciences in, in, in Ho yeah. as part. There's a Kintampo Health Research yeah. Center. Uh, there's a Navrongo Health Research Center, La Grey Chemical Company, and KNUSC, and, uh, and Lekma Hospital. Yes, and then mm. that's in, within Ghana. Outside, just, just uh, within Ghana. Yeah, within yeah, Africa, regional partners, and of course, exactly. the, the, the international partners and, yeah. so and, and all that. We have a vast network. We have one of, one mm. of the most extensive research networks that has ever been built in, on the African continent. And this has just been done within a, a couple of years. Mm. So it's even going to get bigger because uh, the, the network is growing every day. Every day I get uh, you know, emails from people trying to collaborate with us. So it's, just, it's just the beginning. Mm. So they, 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 the point being that all these scientists that we are training, they'll be going back, those who are not Ghanaians, they'll go back to their countries and they'll be working with some of these research institutions that we collaborate with, okay. which means that we continue to work together. Mm. And as students, um, the beauty of it is that they sit in classroom together, they learn together, they you know they, they share problems together, they, they develop a bond. Yeah. And um, the the expectation is that once they are done with their training, they will continue to be friends and they will continue to be professional uh, collaborators. So mm. we, we we are building a network of African scientists. Uh, who should collaborate well into the in, future? In, in, in the sciences, really, one, one area that uh, I am interested in, and of course that in itself is not necessarily a, a scientific area, but in an area like this where you are looking at um, research into um, diseases and all that, and if you look at the African setting, the sort of culture, the society, how it's made up and, and all that, there's a point where 
I, I usually I find that there's not so much of collaboration where see sociologists for instance mm -hmm. uh, in in really understanding how the society is made up such that after any brilliant uh, outcome from the research how to even put it out there and and all that how does the center uh, effectively coordinate with other people in other areas again that's an excellent question so uh, we recognize that and mm -hmm. what we are trying to do uh, uh, is to be able to cultivate young people from mm -hmm. across the disciplines mm -hmm. so because of this very reason we have a graduate internship program which okay. is uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about uh, mm -hmm. when we get to the opportunities uh, for yeah. students Great. we have an internship program where um, we select people who have finished their bachelor's degree those who are completing let's say in May in the next year um, for their national service they work at the center um, the young lady standing next to me here mm. who organized this program yeah is part of uh, our res you know graduate internship uh, program i see and um so she did english and she's working at the center oh and nice. yes <laughs> and her job is to try to help communicate yeah um you know the, 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 yeah, the, so that, the so that, the so that some of us can can have an understanding of because exactly. you see some of the uh, even the words and yeah. Uh, yeah. so so that yeah. so we, we we have we, we we have our eyes squarely on that so oh, nice. you know we have accountants there uh, you know statisticians all kind of people mm. from different departments who who are part of the graduate internship program mm. and that's the the that's the idea is to try to get people involved with research early on. Okay. And uh, to you know have that multi multidisciplinary uh, environment. I see. We're going to come to the opportunities uh, for uh, the uh, for uh, the training, of course, the research, the equipment, and all that. But Wilson, uh, you are from Nigeria. You're studying in Ghana. Uh, you're a young person. I'm interested in this. Uh, do you find that, and that's a lot of the times the accusation that we really uh, give to the systems that we have in Africa and all that. Do you find that the the African setting is really conducive enough for young scientists like yourself rising through the ranks. Uh, you think that you go through too much hassle to really do anything at all? Well, thank you very much. Um, the, the, the economy is always the, 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 the thing that takes the major brunt. So we all yeah. complain about the economy of Africa. So therefore, it, it hinders us from pursuing our, our, our goals and our desires. Mm -hmm. But what I've discovered is this, what you want is what you want. Right. And what you like to do is the only thing you're going to get good at. So why not just give it a shot mm -hmm. and pursue it? But what I've realized is that most people take PhDs and master's degree as plan B. Yeah. So when I'm done, I go find a job. If I don't find a job, then uh, uh, yeah. let me do a master's degree. You cannot possibly be at the top of your game if you do that. So the major problem is that yeah. people are not so passionate about science as it were. So automatically they don't really uh, prosper in quotes in the field when they get in there. Yeah. So the, the major solution for that is that young scientists should be strong-willed enough to want to pursue science. And I can assure you, mm. going through this program, science is fun. Science is worth doing. And science, I mean, in science there is a future for you. You get mm. to do a whole lot of things which I, which I cannot begin to put words to right now. I see. Yeah. Uh, Michael and Kansa, let's uh, engage you also on, on this. Uh, would your role as the the, the project manager and all that. Aside the uh, research, the teaching and learning, the mentorship that a Prof talked about and all that, are there any other areas that you cover, for instance, that perhaps uh, I, I, I have overlooked or, or not, not touched on so far? So, um, yeah. coming in, uh, no. Quite obviously, I'm not a scientist, so yeah. I look at. Oh, okay, you're also not a scientist. I'm not a scientist. So then there's, there's room for a lot of <laughs> yeah, people like yeah, I'm, I'm not a scientist. I, 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 I studied actuarial science and then moved on to do project management. Oh, okay. So coming in, I knew it was, this was a different environment for me. I see. So what I've started to do, my moving forward, is to interact with the students mm. on, a, on a personal level and, and let them understand what's. Like, are they having fun? Mm. Like, is everything okay for them? So can you have fun at that center? Yes, with yes. All the, I mean, with, um, with all the things that are there I, to study for, is I it wish, possible? <laughs> I wish you could come yeah, in. Fun. You could come in one day and, and see our labs and oh, see the students see. working together, laughing. Sometimes oh, yeah. I've even been in lab course myself just to see what's happening and then wow. engage, also engage myself in some things that they do. Interesting. So um, <laughs> I look at student relations more. Okay. That's what's important to me. At the end, they. Um, 
if Wilson goes out and spreads a good word, it brings two or three people to the yeah. center, you understand? So um, I will look at that part of our, our, our center whilst Prof and Co. forgot yeah. to look at the science part. So that's my bit. And, and with that, how, how, how well is it, is, it, is it going? Because a lot of the times, mm -hmm. people in the sciences complain of, of stress, for instance, yes. of how difficult and rigorous the system is. Last time we had the dean of the School of Pharmacy uh, right here, and he was telling us that uh, he, he doesn't think that for somebody who wants to be a pharmacist, mm -hmm. for instance, the sort of meticulousness that is needed in that field, there's no room for you to play around. So for him, it's complete rigor for his students. Yeah. So um, like, like I was saying earlier on, we, we, we structured everything the way mm -hmm. that you have time for yourself. So um, we have times when our students make presentations to us to assess what they've done so far. Okay. And then they have supervisors who are like constant, constantly mm. making sure they are okay with okay. whatever they, they do. So we don't leave them to do just anything. Mm. So um, there are times when you are busy and there are times when you are free. I see. So that you, you enjoy the balance in there, you understand? Great. Yeah. Prof, quick, let's look at some of the opportunities that are really available. Uh, you've touched on some of them early on. Uh, uh, Watson also mentioned that, yeah, there's a yeah, great prospect really ahead in, in science and all that. But uh, if we look at this particular center really uh, here, let's, let's look at some of them, faculty, students, and, and other areas. Yeah, so um, for the students, um, we have master's. Mm. We have the master's program, of course. So. We have fellowships for master students, um, but these are fellowships restricted to students in our program. So you have to get into our program before you can get uh, yeah, the scholarship and access the scholarship. Okay. Of course, yeah. So uh, this is and, and how rigorous is the process for if if one wants to uh, get into the program? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very it's very rigorous. Um, our it's a very competitive program. Whenever we open applications for uh, uh, you know enrollment. We have hundreds of people applying from across the, the continent. Mm. So we go through a rigorous process. Uh, for the masters and PhD students, they have to take an exam um, to test their knowledge of molecular biology. Mm. And then we have an interview uh, where we interact with them and see how uh, motivated. I, I, I bet it's not going to be an easy <laughs> one. I, I used to have a roommate. He yeah. was studying, uh, uh, I think, a Greek si crop science, I think. And there was a component of that. And this was the course that he was always complaining about <laughs> in the room. Yeah. Molecular biology. He was always talking about it and all that. <laughs> yeah. And someone is going to take a test for that for masters and PhD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, but it's not. I, I can imagine. It's not impossible. It's yeah. it's, it's um, you know, it's tough stuff, but it's not impossible. It, mm. It's as Wilson said. It's about your interest and your passion. If that's what you're interested in, you can acquire the knowledge. Now, mm. knowledge is out there. There are books. There's a lot of knowledge on the internet. Yeah. You just you just teach yourself. Mm. And um, you take the exam and you pass and you do the interview. And then if you're competitive, um, you get through. So what we really care about is motivation and I commitment. Um, science is something that... Uh, you need people who are passionate about it and who are committed yeah. to doing it. Because, you know, sometimes students work in the lab up to 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock and all that. Mm. And as you said, some people may find that stressful. Others enjoy it. If you see this, the students in the lab yeah. in the evening, they are, you know, having fun. They are working and chatting with each other and doing everything. They are enjoying the, the, the environment. It's not, they don't see it as a stressful thing. Okay. You know, so but how it depends how, on your interest. What's the capacity really? Uh, how many students uh, is the center able to take up every year? Yeah, so uh, uh, that's a good question. So we, over the last few years, we, we've really ramped up the numbers because okay. there was such a big deficit in PhD training. Mm. So over the last three years, we've taken about 15 uh, students a year into the PhD program. Okay. But uh, from next year, we're going to drop that down to less than 10 a year because uh, now we have so many students in the, in the system and okay. we need to make sure that we're not overstretching the faculty members. So mm -hmm. we're going to drop the number quite a bit. So it's going to become even more competitive. So I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it only yeah. gets... So anyway, just to yeah. finish on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I said 
we have masters phd uh, programs and then we have postdoctoral programs okay which is for uh the young scientists who have completed their phd okay and they want to do some research before taking up a teaching position or uh, you know a full-time uh, faculty position mm -hmm. so um that is also available and all these we advertise on our website mm -hmm. uh we just close the call for the postdocs uh, the next call for masters and PhDs will be coming in January. So, um, those who are interested, just keep an eye on the website and um, uh, you know make sure you you take advantage. And that's one of the reasons why we're here is to make sure that people are aware of the opportunities. Mm. Uh, that the best students out there, uh, you know, come to our center rather than trying to go to the US or. Yeah. or Europe to go and enroll in a second string Yeah, university. I think uh, often when it yeah. comes to programs like this, you don't even look exactly at, 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 at the uh, local at, uh, yeah. programs. Yeah. And I'm interested in how, uh, of course, you talked about um, Wilson, you talked about the opportunities that were existing and all that, but many would just want to look elsewhere because this is a big deal. Uh, why would you want to go to any African institution? You want to believe that there are better ones even in um, Macedonia, the moment is not on the continent, you think that is the best place to be? Yeah, I, I, I particularly like this question because mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about about yeah. Amara, so this, this This is what I've observed. You find most people writing the GRE exams yeah. and all of the exams that they need to go out there. But then when I talk with them and then I ask them about uh, the equipment that we have, even at the center, yeah. how many can you, can you handle? Mm. There are a lot of postdocs around, there are a lot of PhD students are running experiments all of the time. Mm. How many of those experiments can you yourself run here in Ghana? You haven't conquered what you have here in the continent. Mm. And then you want to go out there to begin to operate equipments like two photon microscope or super resolution microscope. Mm. So I believe it's, it's, it's wrong. It's yeah. not supposed to be done. You conquer your environment first mm. and then you go out there. Of course, uh, in presentations when I go for, I, I always say, even my prof always says that yeah. Pittsburgh is going to be Pittsburgh at any time and Oxford is going to be Oxford every time. But yeah. we can assure you that what we have here in Ghana is top quality as well. It's top notch. When you are done with a program, yeah. you can talk anywhere. Mm -hmm. You go to conferences, you can address people because there are platforms that will enable you to get better and better and better all of the time. We have workshops, we have conferences, we have presentations almost every week. So mm -hmm. The, the, the deal is this, right? If why why go be a light amongst light? Mm. If you can be a light here amongst a yeah. little bit of darkness, here you shine. And even the relevance here and the impact will be will be will be you felt will, more. Exactly. There's gonna be like a sort of domino effect where you're good, you get trained better, yeah. and then there's someone very close to you yeah. who you need to train. And then you have the opportunity to even train the person. So yeah. I, I really think young scientists trying to go out there, mm. of course it's good. But you should have a second thought about it. You should be, like Nkrumah will say, a pan Africanist. Even in you science. Know? Even in science. <laughs> exactly. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, you know, let me just uh, um, you know, clarify that we're not saying that, as yeah. he we're not saying that you know, it's not good to go to Cambridge or Oxford or yeah. Harvard. That's when my students uh, uh, you know, get opportunities to go to top class universities, we don't stand in their way. We write letters of recommendation for them to go. Yeah. What I do not encourage my students to do. Is to go to a substandard university just because it's outside Ghana, yeah. you know, just to get out of Ghana. So you, so that you say you went abroad. Meanwhile, the university is not even better than the University of Ghana, yeah. but because it's somewhere else. Yeah, it looks very fanciful. Yeah, because you know, for for, for me, I'm, I'm doing my <laughs> national service now. Yeah. A lot, lot of my friends, and there are numerous scholarship uh, programs that some of them are even uh, spam and all that. They just hit your email all yeah. the time, and you can see schools anywhere in this world. But the moment you're going to sit in a plane and yeah. move outside yeah. Ghana. It's Completely misguided, and, <laughs> and you know, at the center, what we're trying to do yeah. is that we're trying to create an environment where the quality of the research that we do and the quality of the training that you get is not different from most, uh, you know, top level mm. universities. We've been there, all the faculty at the center, I think 100% of them, they've yeah. trained outside, you know. So we've been there, we've seen what is there, and we think that we, we can create the same environment here, and that's exactly what we're doing. Mm. We're, by, we're putting the equipment in place. We, 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 we're changing their mindset and making sure that people understand uh, how to operate in a professional manner. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no difference, really. There's no difference. And we, we, that's why we raise money mm -hmm. to give fellowships to students so that you are not uh, 
thinking about where your next uh, cocoa will come from. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh, and what, what's have you have you taken cocoa already? Oh, or, oh, or I, 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 I love the Guardian cuisine. Uh, I, I love do. I see. Yeah. I see. One day, uh, also come for some bitter leaf experience. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Prof, because of our time, we need to be uh, yeah. going a bit uh, quicker on the issues yeah. that are remaining. So let's talk about the impact really uh, from uh, Workbit and then what exactly uh, have we been able to do so far and what do we intend to do in the uh, years to come? Yeah, so as I mentioned, the impact is already being felt because of the, the training, the, training, the yeah. number of students, the, the opportunities we are providing people. So. And there are over 100 people mm. who may not have had the opportunity to do a master's or PhD because they couldn't simply afford it. Yeah. You know now the, the tuition fees alone yeah. you know, exactly. just scares so people of yes. doing PhD. So you have brilliant students who are walking around basically wasting their talent because they cannot afford to register for a PhD. Mm. So they keep walking around looking for an opportunity to go to any university where they can get a, a scholarship, whether it's a university in a hole somewhere or wherever, mm. just to you know be able to promote their. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what we are doing is giving opportunities to you know brilliant Ghanaian and other African scientists to you know access these uh, uh, you know opportunities right here okay. and get high quality education and a lot of them also get opportunity to travel to demystify that whole thing about getting out getting on the plane and going yeah. outside. We part of our PhD program is that we we try to arrange six months. Uh, you know, travel fellowship. So you go to Cambridge or Oxford yeah. or Harvard for six months and, see. you know, demystify the whole thing. When yeah. you go there, you see that the labs are not even that different from the labs at Wagby. <laughs> and in fact, at Wagby, our labs have more space than uh, when you go to some of these universities, that the labs are so crowded and, you know, there's no space. Uh, here, you actually have more space for yourself. And then you come back and you feel like you, you are not inferior to anybody, mm -hmm. you know. So you, you 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 feel that this thing has been uh, uh, demystified. And you feel right now, you all of a sudden, I have an interest in in in, <laughs> in, in being in being at the center. But yeah, social yeah. work it will not allow me to. to have <laughs> have the and then uh, 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 yeah, yeah. The, the next uh, 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 stage of the impact is yeah. now we're trying to uh, uh, you know generate innovation. So okay. What. We, we try to drive at the center is research that will generate innovation that uh, you know elucidates mechanisms of diseases and tries to uh, uh, find you know targets for vaccines okay. or drug development or new diagnostic methods and things like that. So uh, that's the next stage of uh, the impact we're seeking to have is to try to actually produce things and innovate mm. and uh, uh, you know uh, generate things that we can. You know, claim as our own, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, intellectual property. Basically, we need to generate intellectual property. That's Great, what we need to do that. uh, yeah. Michael. Let's talk about challenges, and I'm sure Prof will also uh, have uh, something to say about about that. Uh, being a project manager, I want to believe your interactions and everything, you've come across uh, some, or with all the nice things that we've heard about the center, everything is all good and rosy. So um, with uh, with sort of the challenges, you know, with, as with ed every project, there's a beginning, there's an end. Okay. But for um, a project like Wagbit, in my opinion, it's something that should come to stay. Mm. So one of our major challenges as with partnerships, and um, as of now, we don't really have the private part private partnership that we intend on having. Okay. And then these partnerships, ideally, we we'll look at corporate organisations doing their bit by sponsoring research. I mean, there are many companies in Ghana who. I think we we'll benefit from what we do at Wagbib. Okay. You know, because we look into diseases and look for um, effective ways to diagnose them. Okay. And then I would think, as a company, why would you want to spend so much money outside doing research? Why, yeah. why not bring it here and do it here? And also, in, in that way, you then help us, we then help you, you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's one big challenge that we face as a center. Okay. And then um, some of the other challenges, as, as we said, like attracting um, students. Mm -hmm. Is what was one of our problems, yeah. but I think that has been overcome now. And then um, other challenges include um, procurement of, of, of our, 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 our items. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we, we have supplies that we bring in that are time bound. Some of these um, reagents okay. that scientists they use in the centers uh, can expire, they stay for too long. And we've been having problems with that almost every single time where things that we, we intend on buying. Mm -hmm. Come and they're they messed up, and also the bureaucracy that comes with yeah, all these things as well. That's a very familiar yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What that comes with these things is also a problem for us. So it affects us a lot. Mm. 
So that's I'm sure Prof can add on to more yeah, the Prof, uh, So these are challenges. I'm sure there are perhaps there are even more. But how are we addressing them so that we are able to move forward and effectively get the utility yeah, that we so, want? So um, just like you know, Michael mentioned um, the the mindset. So science is foreign to many people you know mm. like you were expressing this yeah. you know when people hear about science they just think it's a is a you know it's a new language we're scared too much yeah. when we're growing <laughs> up <laughs> so that that sort of permeates the whole system okay um so as you mentioned things like procurement you know processing of payments everything is done at um slow pace yeah whereas in science you can do things at slow pace if we want to buy reagents you, you can't take three months to procure reagents yeah and that's what happens because you know people don't think that three months is such a long time oh it, it's only three months mm. no in science three months is a long time because we are competing with scientists in other countries mm. where they order things and the next day the things them. are delivered yeah when i was in the u.s if you need anything you go online and you order it and the next morning you have it it's there so how can you compete with those people yeah who get their things next day and yours take three months and six months and but people don't get these things so when you get frustrated and they don't understand why you, you are complaining that this thing has taken three months or six mm. months you know because they think it's not a big deal yeah it's not like buying chairs and buying uh, uh, you know air conditioners yeah. and things that that can wait these are these are not things that wait in science we we move the you timeliness know, is very yes, important everything is timeliness you know so and you know, related to that, customs processes. You know, you bring things to the harbor or the airport, and yeah. then you know you have customs officials just being completely, uh, you know, uh, uncooperative, mm. as if we are trying to make money. We 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 are doing something like charity work, basically. Yeah. We go and raise money from somewhere to do our research because the government does not support uh, mm. do not have enough uh, funds, funding yeah. for research so we try to raise money to do our research and then government officials put impediments in your way you, you know it's very frustrating mm. because you know they don't get it they don't understand what we're doing so mm. that whole uh, mindset of not understanding what science is about and what scientists need in order to promote what they are doing mm. uh, you know there's always lip service about promoting science but to actually put in the the uh, you know the, the structures yeah. that will facilitate the work of scientists. Why why should we have difficulties accessing our uh, uh, reagents and equipment? All the reagents and equipment that we need, they are they are made outside the country. We don't have factories here that make those things. Yeah. So everything has to be imported. So why don't we have a process where we can easily bring these things in? Yeah. You know, just like uh, you know the way you can bring in rice and. Uh, uh, toilet roll and everything else that we import yeah, you know true we have to have special structures yeah for bringing in scientific supplies yeah in a timely manner so that we do not have undue delays so that we can be competitive mm. if you're not competitive you're not going to go anywhere true because if you take six months to do things that other people take two days to do how are you going to ever catch up mm. okay as we speak there's now an impasse between the the university and uh uh, the customs uh, authority. I see. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have a backlog of um, reagents and equipment sitting at the harbor and the port more than a month now. And they can't get them out. You can't get them out because there's some kind of impasse. I don't know whose fault it is, but they said that there's some uh, exemptions that were not processed. And, you know, ah. as a scientist, that ah. is. This, this so we are is. sitting there. My lab right now, we, we use. A reagent called uh, shift fluid or fax flow that we mm. need to run our machine. We've run out of the thing. It's at the harbor, and it's sitting there because of this impasse. It's sitting there, so my students cannot do their work. They're just waiting. Oh. You know, these are things that people don't understand.